Hello and welcome to another edition of Betting People. Our guest today is a very familiar face to many of you because she has been the host of the Racing Postcast for a long time and she is one of the most popular figures, I'd say, from young people in the sport, especially on Racing Twitter. It is Maddie Plell. Thanks for joining us, Maddie. Thank you for having me. So people would know you, um, including a fair few of our viewers, from your time at the Racing Post and also previously from your blogging exploits. I'd love to know how you got into racing personally. Okay, um, so first off, I'm not from a racing background. My family had nothing to do with racing. When I was growing up, I had no connection to racing at all, really, other than watching the Grand National. Um, and basically, as a lazy teenager, which I definitely was, um, my mum would actually put my television in my bedroom on a timer. And this timer would turn on in the in the morning on, on Saturday mornings and I would be too lazy to get up and turn it off and basically it always used to be on channel four and the morning line always used to come on now I couldn't be bothered to get out of bed so I just let the morning line play not having a clue what anyone was talking about and it seems crazy now but through pure chance and through me just sitting there and watching it and picking up things as I went along I got into racing um, Shortly after that, I mean, I liked writing, but didn't have any sort of aspirations as such to, to do anything in particular in the racing industry. Um, and then I started blogging on, on Twitter, as you've mentioned. Um, and one of those was seen by someone who works for Channel 4, Oliver Brett. And I think I was about 15 at the time. I was very, very young. Um, and he basically wondered if... I would be interested in doing some little blogs for the Channel 4 website, which was a great opportunity, obviously, to get. It seems crazy that that's how the sort of fledgling stages of my career got off the ground, but it is true. It was purely down to me being a lazy teenager and um, <laughs> then a, a blog that I did being, being spotted by someone. And obviously, I don't know what they saw, but I'm very, very glad that, that Ollie did. So, um, yeah, it all started from that. And then... I was in the middle of my A-levels, I'd done my AS year um, and I managed to get some work experience at the Racing Post, so I was 17. I had, again, through social media, um, I'm sure we'll probably talk about social media a bit more in racing later on. It's a bit of a friend or foe to a lot of people, but to me, I have a lot for it to thank it for. Um, and not only when I joined Twitter and I got into racing did I discover the racing community and meet people like yourself um, but lots of other people as well and that's really how I got my foot in the door through um, blogs and um, working through Channel 4 etc and I even that's how I got my work experience so um, Ross Clark who used to work for the Racing Post I joked to him one day that I would love to have some work experience um, at the post and somehow it came off so when I was 17 I think I was um, in London for two weeks on the news desk at the Racing Post and um, yeah I was very I was sick of school at the time to be honest I'd had enough of it and um, once I was sort of plunged into that environment that I knew absolutely nothing about and I was terrified um, but I loved every minute of it and as soon as I left after that two weeks I was like right I, I need to work in racing and I need to go back to the racing post. Uh, wonderful um, what was your actually tell us what the work experience was like because you know, you hadn't necessarily been in the racing background and it was I'm guessing you know your first journalistic or even workplace experience um just take us through that first week what's it like being in that environment at such a young age yeah that's a good question um because I I'm I'm from Leicester Leicestershire um and quite a rural small little village um my family all work near to our village and I'd never really experienced a big city like that or anything like that so it was very very daunting um and i'm someone who probably puts myself under quite a bit of pressure anyway to do well and i want to try and come across well so it was terrifying going into uh, canary wharf with all the skyscrapers and everything around me like that i was pretty pretty terrified but um i soon realized that i, I fitted in straight away um 
yeah in terms of what that that week was like I just remember feeling very sort of out of my depth in a way because I just wanted to obviously experience as much as I could and help as much as I could and make the most of the opportunity and as soon as I realized that I was absolutely loving it and I felt really at home and I was getting to grips with what was going on um yeah I I did sort of put myself under that pressure to say you know don't don't let this just pass you by you must make the most of it um but in terms of working on a news desk or like you say I hadn't worked in I think I probably had some work experience placements I worked in a pub and that was pretty much it and then I went straight into a newsroom having you know to be honest barely read newspapers because I was studying for my A levels mm. and I had all sorts of other things going on so it was a really sort of um yeah it, 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 I, I, even now like I'm still learning about everything um and in my career obviously I I, I want to be the best I can be and that experience sort of just opened my eyes to it all if you like uh, fascinating. Um, I must ask also, you watched Dr. Boarding Line, which I'm sure is a rite of passage for most of our younger viewers. Um, what's your first, what's your first racing memory? Um, given that I'm guessing you didn't go racing all that much until uh, that part of your life. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be spot on. Um, to pinpoint one particular moment would be really difficult but um i do remember when i got into racing because as i say none of my family were into it they they obviously acknowledged that it was something that i really enjoyed and, and wanted to go into but um i was very embarrassed actually of being into racing sounds silly to say now but i hid it from everyone i didn't tell anyone at school i was sort of reluctant to talk about it with certain people because i just didn't know anyone else who was into it and i thought you know, understand that. Yeah, and that and to me i mean that's no reflection on the sport whatsoever it's not it's not because it's not open to people like myself it was more just a reflection of my insecurities as a as a as a teenager um but one of my first memories would probably be that um my mum record uh, she said to me oh why don't we go to Kempton on boxing day to watch Corto star and that would have been his final king george and i actually remember saying to her no i can't do that i can't do that i can't do that i can't go you know i was too embarrassed which sounds crazy now and believe you me i very much regret <laughs> not going to see that obviously it's a huge moment but um yeah, it, it took me some time to sort of realise that it was what I was passionate about and there was nothing to be ashamed of or nothing to hide there. Um, people would probably be surprised to think that now, but because it, I didn't really know anyone in the game, it was um, took me a while to feel comfortable with it. No, I completely, completely understand. Um, essentially racing is just not one of those things that most young people you could count on having some sort of affliction with like say for instance football or football rugby or even even cricket even other sports so usually it's football to the exclusion of everything else so i totally get that and again that's something probably um most of the younger viewers here would understand too um i think as well with, with yeah. racing there's to a lot of people who aren't in racing you know a lot of people think of horse racing they think of gambling and they think yeah. of a lot of well at least you know that's my experience anyway they they sort of come with the, the negative connotations and the, the sort of um not stigma but you know people have an idea of what a horse racing fan looks like so when you're a, a you know 15 year old girl it's sort of a bit um it's different it's different no, uh, totally. Um, going on with betting, how did you get into becoming a tipster or, or you know, tipping in general? Because you've done some tipping for the racing post and you, you've done some on Twitter. I think it generally tends to be a rite of passage. Um, how did you start out doing this sort of thing? Yeah, I think like anyone, when you discover racing and I mean, I used to go racing, I'd quite happily, I mean, I couldn't because I wasn't old enough when I first started. Yeah. You can quite happily go and just have a great time and enjoy the day without having a bet. But as I got older, I think I was, um, 
I think I was off school ill one day and my mum was sat there with me and she sort of said, oh, well, I've got five pounds in this William Hill account, you know, see if you can turn it into 20 pounds or something like that. You know, um, silly little things. I didn't really, as someone who was quite young, I didn't really consider betting as, as something really serious until I got into that working environment and legally I could bet myself. Um, and so after having the work experience and then I joined the racing poster, I think as pretty much as soon as I finished my A levels, I was incredibly lucky. Um, you're suddenly plunged into this environment of having so much knowledge around you. And I'm someone who's been fascinated by racing and I've done a lot of research and I, I picked stuff up myself um, quite well, but then you're surrounded by, you know, Paul Keeley and um, Graham Rodway and David Jennings and the, not even just tipsters, just yeah. such incredible expanse of knowledge. And you obviously take on things you hear from them. And personally for me, I mean, betting, I think we'll go on to sort of my betting strategy, Adam, you know, in a bit later Let's on. Start. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, I mean, everyone loves a bet. Betting is is great fun, and I think just naturally, like anyone else, that was something I discovered as I as I got older. And um, you know, the thrill of of having a winning bet and you know picking out a, a big price winner somewhere is um, is something that I think is is just unbeatable, really. I completely agree, and you're right. We will talk about. Um race reading and strategies in the next couple of parts of betting people, but I'd like to thank you, Wendy Playout, for being with us to part one.